By the end of the Second World War, there was a push for Australians to use smart and forward-thinking design practices to rebuild society and advance the nation to the forefront of the world. Designers were taking influences from other nations and implementing them in ways that suited the modern Australian lifestyle. Robin Boyd was an architect at the forefront of this movement, who was predominantly known for his work in the small home service with the Royal Victorian Institute of Architects, alongside his Walsh Street and Riversdale Road homes. Boyd's modernist design philosophy and influence helped transition Victorian architecture to the open plan living that most of us are familiar with today, inspiring and influencing many contemporary designers including Glenn Murcutt, a modern architect who employs Boyd's ideologies of building for the land and takes it a step further with his environmentally conscious building designs. Well, I became an architect, I suppose, because I wasn't a good enough artist. I was considered I was supposed to be the more practical one, and anyway, I just grew up expecting to be an architect. Robin Boyd influenced Melbourne with his architecture, writing and public teaching. He implemented modernist principles within his work whilst focusing on creating new and good design appropriate for Australia. Boyd was born in 1919 and he passed away untimely at the young age of 52. At his time of death, Boyd was Australia's best known architect due to his influence and public appearance. As a young man, he studied at the Melbourne Technical College and the Melbourne University Architectural Atelier during night hours whilst working at the architectural office of A&K Henderson during the day. Throughout his life, Boyd travelled internationally many times where he gathered inspiration for techniques he used within his designs, as well as discovering design tropes he actively disliked. Merkitt was born in London in 1936 before moving to Sydney with his parents at the age of five. He is an internationally recognised Australian contemporary architect known for his designs such as the Magny House and Donaldson House, and the only Australian winner of the prestigious Pritzker Prize, which he won in 2002 in recognition of his innovative and environmentally sensitive designs. He studied at the Sydney Technical College and the University of New South Wales. Modernism, as displayed by Boyd, represented focusing design on the needs of the modern-day individual, removing any historical and ornamental influence on the design that was deemed unnecessary. Boyd devoted his life to creating a wider public understanding of the benefits of good design through his work, writings and presentations. He asked everyday civilians to follow the modernist idea of reassessing what is good design and expanded thinking and expectations beyond the known and the given. He urged people to reassess and innovate. Just because something had always been a certain way didn't mean it couldn't be improved with modernist materials and techniques. Boyd pushed for design that was cost-effective, high-quality, functional and accessible to all. After World War II, the Australian lifestyle had shifted dramatically. There was a huge shortage of houses, about 400,000 units were needed nationally, due to the large number of people returning and travelling to Australia from overseas after the war. This led to a huge rise in homelessness and poverty. The servicemen and women returned to small and poor living conditions in single rooms, garages, tents, caravans, verandas, lofts or stables, if they were lucky, or in emergency housing in army camps. Because of this need for societal and economic reform, designers identified that a change in design thinking, especially within architecture, was necessary. Living and material costs had more than doubled since before the war, up to five times average annual earnings, meaning designs had to be stripped back and become cost-effective in terms of decoration and materials. Designers began shifting towards ideas that employed the modernist principle of designing for societal change. This was where Robin Boyd's work with the Small Home Service Victoria was so important. Robin Boyd's work with the Royal Victorian Institute of Architects and the Small Home Service is where he was first able to promote the concept of modernism and good design to the general Australian public. The Small Home Service was an operation of a professional advisory bureau dispensing designs and complete architectural drawings and specifications for a new house set up by the RVIA and the Age newspaper. The Small Home Service offered 40 plans for standardised housings for sale at $5 each. These plans could be replicated and mass-produced. By introducing the sale of standardised housing plans, Boyd's influence and the modernist ideology was spread across the state. These small homes took inspiration from ideas displayed in the German Bauhaus movement, Japanese modernism and the New Brutalist movement. Ways to save space and hence money were key focuses of the small homes' designs Therefore, the disappearance of the formal dining room in favour of a dining nook and a combined living slash dining room and storage walls became popular. Housing size was limited to 1,200 square feet, 111 metres squared, including all porches. 
the maximum for timber allowed without a permit under the state building restrictions. Designs were beginning to incorporate climate and position with an emphasis on buildings facing north to benefit from the bedrooms receiving the morning sun. In 1947, Robin and his wife Patricia acquired a block of land in Riversdale Road, Camberwell. Here, Robin developed his first home for himself using modernist materials, principles and techniques, which although these ideas had begun developing steam overseas in Europe, were a very radical introduction to suburban Victoria. This became known as the first Boyd House, aka the Boyd Riversdale Road House, and became a location for Boyd to explore and develop his architectural theories practically, making his own house an early draft of his ideas to some effect. During his time living at this location, Boyd was developing his theories on Victorian regionalism and beginning to explore the prototype of the open living approach to the kitchen family room configuration. He followed modernist principles involving keeping the design true to form and lacking ornament. He experimented with innovative new materials such as solomon. This house became one of the earliest examples of post-war modernism in Australia and it used structural and configuration ideas typical of the subsequent small homes plans. Boyd's second family home, the Wall Street House, allowed him to further express modernist ideas and display radical changes of how a house could and should be structured. This was one of the earliest examples of an open plan living style in Victoria, as the house is not separated into many various rooms, instead the opposite approach was taken. Australian architects were looking to build a national identity with their design, and this was typified with Boyd's Wall Street House, which took particular care in creating a design that helped provide Victorian and Australian architect with more identity and emphasis on sensitivity to the local environment. Large windows allowed the building to soak enormous amounts of natural light, but the lack of privacy this feature caused was solved by the bushy external environment. The building integrates and experiments with the connection between indoors and outdoors by the positioning of a plant-filled courtyard in between the two main wings of the building. This layout effectively separates the building into two separate wings, one for Robin and Patricia and the other for the children. This was a very intentional design decision by Boyd based on his lifestyle. Architecture. My father used to bring in architectural forum and architectural record as journals from the United States. He was particularly interested in architecture. In fact, he actually invented lots of things. His great interest was in thinking and inventing, which... Contemporary designer Glenn Merkitt, a recipient of the Robin Boyd Award, was influenced by the styles brought to the forefront by Robin Boyd's work. Within his architectural projects, Merkitt incorporates open plan living, a concept that didn't find traction in Australia until Boyd's 1958 family home was built. Merkitt was known for responding to a specific climate and site, an idea displayed by Boyd with his Wall Street and Featherston houses. Merkitt employs modernist ideologies of anti-historicism and has noted, The problem we have mostly is the buildings we're putting up are inappropriate. From Darwin to Melbourne to Western Australia, it's a disease. They've all got to have air conditioning because they're built the wrong way around. Understanding of place, understanding the materials, understanding the availability of materials. In response to his architectural criticisms, Merkitt developed the Magni House, a building which was recognised internationally as an exemplar of outstanding architecture because of its simplistic and reductive design, adopting materials that would create an internal air conditioning system and the roof angle would allow water runoff to be captured in a tank. Merkitt intends to respond to climate with his designs, an example of which includes his Palm Beach Peninsula House, selecting black and zinc as a material coating due to the property's location in an area at high risk of wildfires, thus protecting the house from heat damage. By focusing on details such as these, Merkitt aims to integrate architecture that is rooted in Australia's culture and its diverse climate and topography. To summarise, Robin Boyd championed the modernist ideology to thousands of homes across Australia through his radical designs, influencing many contemporary designers such as Glenn Merkitt into developing good design made for the Australian environment. Ideas behind modernism change as time evolves, whilst the focus was once on creative, cheap, effective and accessible design, although this is still the case, Merkitt focuses his design on the environmental impact of his building, integrating them into their surroundings to make them more sustainable.